That's your phone. That's your phone case. He got me a phone case because I got a new phone. Which kind of phone did you get? I was gonna. Oh, you got the. Was that the eleven? Oh, are are we on the eleven? They're on the twelve right now. Okay. I got the eleven, not the eleven Pro. The Pro has like the three lenses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't need like a super expensive phone. I just want one that works. One hundred percent. I think, and I think I was telling Alex is like most technology hits like a ninety percentile. So once you get to the 90th percentile, you can't improve it anymore. There's really nothing right. else to put in it. And we're at we're there with cell phones. It's, really, <laughs> yeah. it's like, what you else are you going to put, put the, on there? A projector? Like, I don't... Who cares? Like, <laughs> like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, they honestly could just be giving us things that we can fix. And uh-huh. I think we would be happier. Like, phones, uh-huh. we can go and get repaired. And right. still get the updates and everything. And I think what we'd be... But, yeah, but they're you know, making them single use devices. That's like a 100%. whole other a whole other episode. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I have I, I, uh, I kind of have a little passion to kind of uh, work with technology. Like I had an old laptop. It's like 2012 uh, MacBook, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. I opened it up, replaced a bunch of the components, and now it works just as new. So I'm gonna kinda, send you my old laptop then. You should. You should. Yeah, no, seriously, is, because it? it's it's an old MacBook Pro. Like it's okay. it hurts me. I, needs I help. love it. I love it. Um, I can I, I replaced the RAM. I replaced that. Right? Isn't it? Doesn't it feel but so great? It's still, it's still really, really slow. Like okay. the, what's how much it, RAM did you put in it? Eight? The I think the most I could do was sixteen. Sixteen is the most, yeah. So it should yeah. be moving quickly. That means it's more of the hard drive, probably. Yeah, that she needs a nap. Like, (laughs) but I kind of have a passion for it. And I I think there's a place for it, especially for designers and maybe, Uh maybe business possibly, but I don't want to, it's, it's on on the back burner. It's in my to-do list later when I have more time. That's cool. Yeah. That's like, I want to own a dream We throw too much stuff away. Like, yeah, no, for real, we do. I, I've noticed that once we started recycling, thankfully, like here in St. Louis, we've got some pretty good like recycling options and stuff. And um, our apartment complex has a recycling bin that everybody can go and put their stuff in. Um, But before I didn't realize how much trash we were throwing away. And now the recycling bin will fill up faster than the trash can does. And I'm like, I should probably pay attention to my single use items. (laughs) Well, we, you just don't notice, and they they market them yeah. to us like that, and that's the mm-hmm. that's ultimately the problem is we don't hold businesses accountable. Apple oh, yeah. should not be allowed to put out an iPhone that is single use and gets thrown in the landfill. They shouldn't mm-hmm. be allowed to do that, plain and simple. Yeah. But because yeah. we bow down to corporations, they're yeah. they're allowed to do whatever they want as long as it makes a buck, and that's yeah. sad. It's really sad, and they're making their new iPhones even less replaceable. So yeah, you can't like replace the batteries. You can't replace a lot of the stuff. And there's actually several states right now that have um, lawsuits out. Oh, for, really? For, Good. Yeah, for Apple. Good. Because after the new phones got released, the the new iOS uh, started jacking up everybody's phones. Like my my old phone, which it wasn't even that old. Um, I I had it for two years, but as soon as I updated it, everything started glitching. Everything. I couldn't type. It would take like 40 seconds for my words to pop up. Like I, my apps were glitching and like everything was bad. And I was like, okay. So we ended up getting a new one because I, <laughs> I was done. I couldn't hear out of it. Like it was. <laughs> and to have a business, you have to have a phone that works. Exactly. So, like yes. you have to have and, a computer that works. So. And I use, I believe it or not, I use my computer to phone, phone to computer I love every that. single I love, day, I love every it. single day. Yeah. It. Anytime somebody sends me files, notes, like anything, I'm constantly sending back and forth from my computer to my phone. That's why I Apple will them. always have me. They'll always have oh, me. Oh yeah. That, that <laughs> like reason. we will complain, yeah. but we love them. <laughs> Cause I, I did, I tried to do the thing where I was like, I'll have a Samsung phone and an Apple computer because I'm it's doing graphic design. It doesn't work. You literally exactly. have to plug it in and try to get mm-hmm. it to talk to each other. It doesn't. It doesn't work very well. And now you can just press a button. It's like, bing. Airdrop. There we go. Airdrop. It's right there in front of you. I'm like, oh, so, yeah. I don't know. I kind of have. Uh, I'm kind of drawn towards that a little bit, and I might explore it a little later. 
yeah and see what i can do with it dude i will happily mail that thing to you because <laughs> i i was about to send it and i know a lot of places like verizon and stuff they'll they'll take your old phones and recycle them for you um but yeah i was about to throw that thing away well you want to like, know why they will because why? they will take all the components out of it and fix up an old phone and sell it ah uh, yeah so yeah. they just my, got my all your components for free. okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah well yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's <laughs> Recycle, a game, guys. It's Recycle. A they are here playing games with us. <laughs> we stuck in the we're, middle. We're gonna talk about all of that. Oh, we're gonna conquer the world, um, one podcast to. episode at a time. <laughs> you wanna know what one of my Trello tabs is? What? Uh, plans to conquer the world. <laughs> 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 yep. Yep, I need a Trello tab now. And for those of you that are listening, what is Trello? I don't even know if our episode officially started. We're just kind of doing Okay. (laughs) Trello is a software. Did your wife tell you about the client management software? Yes. Are you going to get looking at it? I want to pay for it. I want to pay for it right now. They will help you set it up. Yeah, we want to get our website, my website done first. So I'm working on my experience guide. Yeah, um, I'm gonna do. I'm working on that probably today, later today. With okay. Dreams guide, and cool. then we'll work on the website probably beginning of next week. Hopefully, get that done by the end of the week. Okay. And probably get that going that week after that. We're just trying to get everything up to some type of started so that mm-hmm. we can start making adjustments later. Because yeah, like we talked about, you can't really go on the fly trying to adjust everything. Yeah, this entire month, I'm literally sitting down and going over everything in my business and going, okay, what needs to be fixed? Like, what's my biggest pain point? All of that. Thanks to your wife. (laughs) Thanks to your amazing wife for talking to me. She's great. And I, 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 people need that. Like, that's what I told Mm -hmm. her. I was like, you're almost like a business therapist before we even get to the business part, people need to clear the, clear the way, like, yeah, like take all these open folders and push them to the side so they can even get through to where they're trying to go. So I told her she's great. She is. She, when we sat down, I was like, like, and she, we were talking about how she didn't even know if she could help me, but everything we were talking about, I was like, girlfriend, like this is, this is grade A. This is awesome. This information. And it's stuff that I was just now learning about. Like, I feel like all the growth in my business has started in the last two months. I've been around for 12 freaking years. And it wasn't until I decided to get in touch with myself and get in touch with my business that I realized where all of my stuff was like. Isn't it weird? Like, (laughs) cause that's what I've been thinking about that a lot lately too, is like, it seems like when you start a business, you have to get more in touch with yourself to even oh, yeah. be able to handle having one. Because yep. if you don't, you ignore a lot of stuff that's going on. So it's almost like you have to be a sound person to even run a successful business. It's yes. Wild. It's no, a wild seriously. Concept. When when I started paying attention to my mental health and the things that I needed, my business started growing. Like you, when you neglect yourself, you neglect your business. Yep. Period. If, if you are not taking out personal time, if you don't have set days uh, for no computer, no nothing, no answering clients, like if you're not paying attention to your internal needs, it is going to crap on everything that you are trying to do. So uh, a little psychology uh, <laughs> tidbit tidbit there tidbit. y'all y'all need to start connecting with yourself. <laughs> Connect. <laughs> Connect for sure. Ooh. I can't um, stop moving my chair. I'm like, <laughs> now my stomach's growling. Hopefully they can't hear that. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> my dog's right, well, out and I don't know what it's about. I'll what do you hear, some... boy? Oh, wait, you have your headphones in, so he can't hear me. Yeah, he can't. I can't hear. Can you hear him? No? Mm-mm. All right, cool. Cause I thought I heard a baby us. earlier. <laughs> you might have. You might have. That's it. That's it. That's, I feel like that's going to be our podcast. It's just rent. There's a baby rent. noise at 11 56. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to tell Sophie, she was like, Mommy, do you want to go to the pool with me? And I'm like, It's December. But you're in a swimsuit, so I can't say anything. 
She she brought Go my to the swimsuit. bathtub. <laughs> she she literally brought my swimsuit. It's on the floor. Like <laughs> so I love cute. my kid. Yeah. She, I cannot wait for you to experience this because you're experiencing the really fun stuff now. But once they start so forming weird. like their thoughts, you're no. like. So for <sighs> me, I've always thought that that part's going to be the greatest. Like a lot yeah. of people are like, I can't, I can't stand my 17, 18 year old because they talk too much. And it's like, <laughs> no, I want to know what they're thinking. Yeah. I, like I can't wait for that point. Like yes. what is in your head? <laughs> what are you running into in the world that I'm not? Like I yep. can't wait for that part. Like, oh, it's a, it's, it's a lot of like, once you realize that they can start forming sentences, it's yes. pretty, it's insane. Like Emma and I will sit here and go, she's a whole kid. Like yes. she's a whole person. This is 100%. weird. <laughs> so weird. I love it though. All right. I guess we should, we should be should podcast pod. dates now. Let's, let's, we pod. should probably, probably get our pod on. Let's, let's pod, let's pod. pod All over. right. All right. Well, what are we on? Episode six? Six. All right. Six fingers. Six fingers. Let me see if I can. There we go. <laughs> Episode. <laughs> Episode six. Taking the leap. Taking the, the leap. leap. Uh, yeah. What's up, dropouts? What's going on, guys? Yeah, we are talking to you. You're in good company here as we are a podcast for the creative looking to enrich their life with knowledge. We won't be giving you three ways to get rich quick. We are for the college avoider, the corporate dropout, the person burning the midnight oil on their next big project. And we are here to talk with you, offer up the processes that work for us in our businesses, and to be real, this might be your new fave podcast. Yeah. Pretty excited. Yeah. I'm Jessa. And I'm Cameron. And uh, this is Wisdom by Design. Thanks for tuning in. We are here. We are here. here. Episode six. How are you doing today? I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. I uh, I had to change day. my sweater. It's still the same day. <laughs> I just saw you a few minutes ago, but uh, I had to change my sweater because it was a very you know what? That sweatshirt <laughs> you was are, a great you are, investment. You are on it. You're like, I love it. Give me a, I, this sweatshirt and nothing else. I'm like, oh my gosh! I my house. I'm gonna have to turn my thermostat down in order to use that that's sweatshirt. Hilarious. That's that's where I'm just at. Just open right the now. door. Yeah, yeah. How are you? What's going on in your I'm world? Good. I'm doing good. It smells <laughs> like uh, my wife started cooking uh, lunch because the fire alarm just went off. So you know, good times. <laughs> Living in an apartment. Uh, every time we turn on it. our oven, I hate yes. it. I, yes, yes. <laughs> every every time, every time. Apartment living. I'm like, if if my food just size yes. some steam, my, yes. my the thing will go off. I'm like, okay, yes. well, I always have to flip on the fan, and the fan like, the fan's always loud. Why? <laughs> like, is it because they think like, do people smoke in apartments? So they're like, well, we got to put a fire alarm here, and it's got to be super sensitive. I'm like, I guess so. I guess. I, guess. I don't know. It's not connected <laughs> to the fire department, so who is it helping? No one. Well, they it's stop. Us. How about we Help stop with that? How about, how about we stop with that? That'd be I sound, I've been watching a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and I love Larry David. He's amazing. I don't know if I've heard of that. What is that? You've never heard of it? He, he, yeah. So Larry David is basically this, um, he's the creator of Seinfeld, and oh. he's basically this grumpy man. And he tells it how it is and he questions everything. And I feel like you watch that show and you're like, wait, why do we do this the way that we do? This is like, he just calls it how it that's is. That's awesome. It's amazing. I, I started watching, and that's a TV show? Yeah, it's on HBO. They, well, it, yeah, it's an HBO show. So it's uh, an HBO on, show? like season 10. Oh my um, gosh. He's got to be like 80 and they're still making seasons. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. How, um, we started watching uh, Somebody Feed Phil on, I've, on I've Netflix. I've seen that before, yeah. It is so funny. The way is he responds, oh my gosh, the way he responds to food is me. Like it is, okay. it is me. He is my spirit animal. He's always like, mm. Because mm. <laughs> we started it, we started it, but we didn't get very far. So, oh my gosh, you you do you have to sit down and take a take another look at it. I okay. swear, it is the sweetest episode. He is just the kindest, funniest guy, and he just wants to eat food and like That's experience great. everybody else's cultures and new things. And 
I I love it. Tony and I will watch it every single day. And that's day. funny because there is a Curb episode about that guy. Uh, really? And and that that Netflix show. Like that's how they're still putting out episodes. So that's how current it is. Okay, so, that's I guess because cool. like Larry David knows him. I think he created. Um, uh, everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, he, he made okay. everybody loves Raymond. Yes, yeah. yes, so, he is he is very funny. I I like I like his personality and stuff. So I love watching the show. But now I'm gonna have to watch okay. that because that sounds it's freaking so awesome. Funny. What like, are you I, reading? Oh, reading sorry, right now. Uh, it, it's just great. It's great, and it's yeah. great because it's like it's ten it's ten season in ten seasons in. So it goes all the way back to like. To, in the 2000s era. So you're getting Amazing. some of the, the comedy from that point to some of the comedy from now. There was an episode about um, uh, make, make America Great Again and the hats. And so basically he wears this hat to keep people from talking to him. And it's so funny. It's so funny. And it's like a did great I, spin on it. Great did I spin show you my hat? Yes, you did. <laughs> my hat. It, you guys. I love all I'm the ones sorry. that are like mocking it. Oh, it's hilarious. My so hat is funny. bright red. It looks like a Make America exactly Great Again, it. but it America says, America. made you look Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <Just say. laughs> I have, I, what? I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Fight me. Okay. Fight me. <laughs> that is, every time I put that hat on and, I, and we live in Jeffco, so it is very, uh, I don't know what Jeffco is. Jeffco is the outskirts of, it's not St. Louis. We're we're like we're like 15, 20 minutes from downtown, oh. but it's very um small minded area. Okay. It's like Missouri. Unfor- unfortunately. Like, no, you're back don't in get Missouri. Me, I'm in Missouri. Like, okay. don't get me wrong. Like I, I've met some amazing people here that are freaking out of this world. And like St. Louis as a whole, oh my gosh. Like you cannot, when it comes to their pride and like, like protecting people that they love and like standing yeah. up for people, St. Louis doesn't play. And so like being a part of a lot of the stuff that's been going on, especially here in St. Louis has been just my soul. It's so, it's great. so good. It's great. But um, what were we I talking think, about? Oh yeah. I think you asked me which book I was reading, which books I was reading. Yeah. Yeah. So what, Ugh. sorry, this thing's like, my earring is like caught uh, in this. It's like squishing it. It's squishing my earring. And I only wear one. <laughs> it's in the top part. I'm not weird, guys. Um, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, what what books are you reading right now? What books are you reading uh, right now? I'm still reading that. Let me see. I got it. This one. This is the oh, one we were yeah. talking about with the branding. I'm like yes. halfway through it, but it's 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 thick like there's a lot to it like it'll be and what's the what's the title reading. of that for people who um, aren't watching the youtube creative strategy and the business of design so yes. basically it goes from beginning to end on how to deal with a brand and how to get yep. that brand out there and how to connect to um your correct client so it's very thick i'm just reading a lot of branding books right now i i think i, I heard somewhere where like if you find the top three books in a topic and you read all three of them, you now know 90% of the information on that topic. Really? Look at that knowledge, See? guys. Knowledge is power. So, and, and books really are. Like, I, books, and I'm a yeah. testament that I hated reading growing up. And like, just with doing this, I'm like, well, I'm noticing that Instagram and YouTube don't necessarily do, they're selling me something. They're trying to sell me yeah. something. Yeah. But books don't time. have that edge. They, they're they're not try, they're not trying to sell you they already sold it to you so <laughs> you bought it it's you in your it. hands right it's now. in your hand so yes. they're not trying to upsell you so books are really something that i'm trying to to push as it being important i don't think people take the time to read as much as they should well yeah because they think that they don't have the time i was one of those people i was yeah. like i literally don't have the time and then you reminded me that audiobooks yes. were a thing are a thing they are a thing. So I, I have like three or four books that I'm reading right now. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I love, I love all of them. And I'm, yeah. I, if I sit down and I start reading those, sometimes I fall asleep. I have to, That's why my I do brain the audio. relaxes and like, 
I do the yeah. audio oh, yeah. on a walk. I put the audio the while I'm while you're walking. Um, yeah. when you're in the shower, like whenever I'm doing laundry, I have audio on podcasts, whatever. Yep. So, um, that's freaking awesome. Um, yep. Are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready. We're just we're just talking. We're talking. Chatting it up. Chatting it up. So, we're here to talk about taking the leap. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to lead? Yeah, absolutely. Because I feel like I feel like you have a lot to say on this topic. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, so we I think it was we talked a couple episodes back about uh, me kind of um, I was I'm an in, I was an engineer at a job. Um, not really. I would work maybe an hour and a half to two hours a day. The rest of the day, other six hours, I would sit on YouTube and I'd be stuck doing this five days a week. 365. Like, this is what I did every day. Um, mostly because I felt like it was safe. It was comfortable. It is kind of what was written already. It's the career my parents told me I need to have. So um, I kind of sat there and, and was okay with that. Knowing that showing up and knowing that I hated it every day. So right. kind of with Corona, uh, I got laid off in July. Uh, and had to sit with the fact that I no longer have a job. So I can either try to apply to jobs, which the aerospace industry isn't supposed to pick up until 2023. So sit around and and wait, basically, or go ahead and forge my own path. So the comfortable thing would have been to go and apply to jobs and just wait. But I did the uncomfortable thing and said, hey, no, I'm not going to apply to jobs at all. So I haven't applied to a job probably since May. Um, And all the ones that I did apply to, nothing came of. So it's all like reinforcing itself. So I decided at that point, the leap, I had to take that leap and be okay with it. And kind of this episode, we want to talk about like, what does it mean to take the leap? How does it, what things you have to put in order to take the leap? And kind of uh, what do you need to look out for after you've taken the leap and like moving forward? Um, Absolutely. I know for me, uh, I kind of got, because engineering is so, we get paid pretty well to be engineers. Um, do you hear that? Can you hear that? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> One second. Okay. Honey, come here. All right, we'll just cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's awesome. It goes into I, what we were talking about, though. I say we leave it in, man. Just, we should leave it in. Okay. <laughs> no, just leave it so in. Where was I at? Um, so kind of uh, having to take the leap and um, because I didn't have a job anymore. So in taking that leap, I had to decide uh, kind of what things, now being a corporate dropout, what things do you have to kind of operate outside of that don't ne- you don't necessarily have a way in? Um, one of those big things being a check week to week or a check every two weeks. Mm -hmm. You don't have that coming in. So what are some things that you can do to make yourself um, okay with not having that? I know I started putting into my 401k early when I first got my job. Um, So I was able to actually this year because of coronavirus, you can pull that 401k money out with no penalty and they're splitting the tax payments on that up over three years. Wow. So I will only owe, owe a third of that tax money when it comes tax season. Um, right. But I can use that money to live off of. And then right. if I put that money back before the end of those three years, uh, I don't have to pay one of those, whatever tax period, whatever tax payment is up if I would not pay it within that time period. Right. So yeah. it, there's, that- there's benefits. Like, so pulling your 401k is one thing that I never thought I would have to do. But you right. have to attribute for the fact that you don't have a paycheck coming every two weeks. Yeah. So, and so in that, in that sense, like this is something that you had to do as a safety net. Um, For sure. It's right. And it's, it's not something that we're saying like, Hey, go off and and take out your 401k. This is, this is the option that like, this is an option. This is something that's there. And thankfully you have that safety net. For sure. Um, A lot of the time when people are about to go into um, their business, this was before COVID happened. Yeah. We usually try to say, hey, try to save up money. Try to save up like three to six months of your business bills, your your whatever bills for your home, 
things like that and put it aside in order to help you through something like this. But you didn't even have that. You didn't have no. that notice. You didn't have anything. They no. said you're let go. Zero. Well, yeah. I had, and I did have some money saved away, but that was to right. buy a house this year. I was yeah. supposed to buy my first house this year and I couldn't do it. Yeah. So that, yeah. and that money was a, a certain amount that we wanted to put down, but in order to have something that we can live off comfortably and I know yeah. I can get myself a good distance away from having a job, you got to have something. And yeah. uh, I've been talking to some people and another option is business loans. Yes. There are business yes. loans also out there for this reason um, mm-hmm. to help you get your business going without having to take all the money you might've saved that you now need to live off of. You can go get right. a business loan to help you support your business. Right. So those are two very valid options that you have dealing with taking that leap, taking that jump. Um, yes. I know another one that another big problem that I thought another reason why I didn't want to take the leap is healthcare. Healthcare mm-hmm. is a big one. It's I've talked to a lot of people and that's the reason they work. Some of these, these jobs that they hate is because healthcare. The one thing healthcare, because our healthcare is tied to our jobs. They work and work jobs. They hate because they need healthcare. How sad mm-hmm. is that? It, it is sad. Uh, the only reason I'm even comfortable in my job, because like, obviously I don't have health care through my photography business. I have it through my husband. Yep. And so like, we're lucky in that sense, because he does have great health care through his job. But if he were to lose that job, that is a very valid thing that you need to be thinking about. So yep. tell us. <laughs> well, for me, for me, we're just take, we're just going with the risk. Like, yeah, there's not yeah. really much we can do about it. My job, um, sent us some things that was like, you can pay into this other healthcare plan, Mm -hmm. but it's $1,600 a month. $1,600 a month is really, that's like half of the money I need to to live month to month. How am I going to get that to health insurance? Right. So it's one of those things where it's like, I have to take the risk and know that that risk will be okay. Healthcare bills come after. So if anything were to ever happen, the healthcare bill will come Mm -hmm. later. And most yes. of the time you're, you can dispute them. You, they're well, and especially if it's an them. emergency, they can't, they can't turn you away. That's sure. a lot of places. They physically cannot turn you they away. Physically um, cannot. So. I know when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, I was really, really sick and we were in between um, healthcare. And mm-hmm. so for two emergency room visits, we did not have health insurance and it yeah. was not fun. So, not. you know, it's, it's not fun, but um, you're right. Like sometimes that's just something that you have to, yes. you have to weigh, mm-hmm. you have to weigh it out. You have to, do you want to be, you know, do you want to be stuck in a job that you hate or do you want to have a savings plan? So when that emergency comes up, you're able to tackle it. Well, yeah. Healthcare is just one of those things where it's, and it's an industry that kind of takes advantage of us. Kind, kind of, I... kind of. I know this isn't a political podcast, but kind of definitely takes advantage of us. So <laughs> it definitely does. Yeah. And that's that's what like those are those machines. Like those are those machines that I'm trying to opt out of and, and kind of go yeah. against. I mean, what can we do? Like honestly, there's just at the end of the day, there's literally nothing you can do. If you can't can afford vote. it, you can vote. That we that's can true. Stand up and we can vote. That's true. You guys. That's true. That's, <laughs> That's about it, but... Your PSA, uh, get involved. There's, there's nothing you can do yourself to go make that happen. Right, right. But but we can we can work our freaking hardest to get the right people in place to fix that. Sure. So, and it's, man, this year. Uh, man, one. this year. We rough know one. that you guys are all, all feeling it. So... Yeah. So that was one of them. Um, your, the 401k, the savings yep. plan, um, the health healthcare. insurance. And These then the all other one you have to think about. Yeah. The other one I have, two, I have two more. So, um, another one that I've had to deal with that I didn't think I would ever do. It was actually kind of weird is, um, selling my car, like with the way that things are now. And you yep. don't, I don't, I don't think my son has ever even traveled in that car. I was only using it for work. And so we were like, well, we need to, because in in situations like this, you need the smallest like footprint when it comes to like bills. So we're Mm -hmm. like, we're paying car insurance on that. It was paid off, but it was just one of those things where it's like, 
it's going to sit out here. And because I hadn't turned it on, the battery was dying. In it. Like all this stuff goes wrong yes. when cars sit in place because they're not right. meant to sit in place. So I went two weeks ago and sold my car. So now we're down wow. to one car. Like, yeah. that was a weird one. Cause I was like, I had some emotional tie to it. And I'm like, right. why? It's just a car. But if I, and I, if I don't use it, there's always Uber, there's always Lyft. Like there's a lot of other situations. So really just checking the life that you're living in and the yes. things that are there, like mm-hmm. you have to living within to. your means. Yes. Living that yes. is probably the hardest, Hard. but the best lesson that I have yes. ever learned. And sometimes it's still hard, but being a business owner, especially a small business owner, you have to make sacrifices. You have to look at the things that you're doing and how it's affecting your family and your business. So you, you notice that that was something that was taking up money. It was something that was going to waste and you got rid of that thing. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that you have the option to downsize. There is nothing wrong. Yeah, Every there's time. nothing wrong there's nothing with wrong. doing that. Yeah. And, and like, even even just paying attention to your grocery bill each month. Like, there, <laughs> we have control of everything in our lives, you guys. And when we don't pay attention to those things and we let them run them, we forget that we have the ability to change it. Yes. And we can. And so yeah. I love that you you told us that because, like, we've been a one-car family for over a year. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, I actually, so when my business was failing, um, my car got repossessed. Mm. My, my car was costing me over $800 a month with, with insurance. Um, I, I wanted a reliable car so badly that I got a brand new flipping car. You guys, it was, listen, I, I already know where I screwed up. It was a 2019 Malibu, um, Chevy. It was beautiful. I miss it. I do. But it was way out of my price range. It was, it was something that we couldn't afford. We had this broken down car and we had a newborn baby and I wanted something safe. So I jumped into this lease or this, this whatever rental agreement. And um, we ended up ass backwards so fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hurt like that. That was probably one of the catapulting points in my life that changed everything because I remember going month to month, not remembering or like not knowing where food was going to come from. Um, We had friends dropping off diapers and formula for the baby. Like it was, it was really freaking hard. So, or maybe it was a 20, I think it was a 2018. It, this, this happened over like a two year span, but um, it, it was last August. So yeah, it's been a year. Last August was when our car was repossessed. And I tell you what, although it hurt my ego, to have a car repossessed, that was eight hundred dollars gone. It felt great, didn't it? Oh my god! And here's the thing: we had set it up to where we were doing, um, we were doing a deferment payment. So we had paid two months interest to defer the payment for the car because it was going to be like two thousand dollars to get caught back up. Mm-hmm. And they had taken that deferment payment and they didn't process it the correct way. They processed it as half a payment. So Mm. 60 days later, they came in and took the car. And when I called GM and I said, hey, where the hell is my car? Like, what is going on? They were like, oh, well, you were behind on your payments. I said, no, I made two deferment payments. It's supposed to be right here. And they go, oh, yeah, that's here in the notes. Well, technically, we already sent you a letter, so we can't do anything about that. It was meant to be that way. It was was meant meant to be that that way. It was meant to be that way. It was gone. It was out of my life. And like, I literally sat down and you know how we talk about starting at a first step. I sat down and I was staring at the computer, reading an article about what happens when your car gets repossessed. And I mean, I was embarrassed. I was, I, my car was gone. I couldn't make the payments. Like it it was embarrassing to even think about because we didn't have a car. And they took the car seat with the car. So I couldn't go anywhere because they refused to give me the car seat back. Like (laughs) when I say I was crying, I was screaming, like I was, I was literally shaken. I was sick. Like it was just an awful experience. And now I look back at it and I was, I'm like, that, that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. 
Mm-hmm. Like, was it hard? Yeah. Especially being a small business owner, but things you have to sit and go, okay, what is going to be, what is going to be more beneficial for my family and getting yes. rid of that $800 a month thing is way, is way more oh. of a benefit. <laughs> you get way more value, a value. There goes the word again. We're, yeah. We're value. Talking value. Yeah. 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 And, and obviously like the, with the payments and stuff, they're like, oh, well, you, once they sold the car, they're like, you're going to be in charge of whatever gets left after they sell the car. Like they were like, you're still in charge of the payments. Mm. And we were like, "Uh, uh, uh, wait a second. And we got that taken care of. So (laughs) because it wasn't, that's that's, most people probably don't like, that's kind of messed up. No, they were literally trying to come after us. The the car was gone. They were trying to get $17,000 out of us for a car that we no longer had. And I, and that they took, that they took after we had done everything we had called, we had made the deferment payments. It was the person that processed the payment wrong that screwed up. And so our car got taken away. So our whole lives were flipped upside down by one mistake. So you have to think on your feet. And this is, and I feel like that's the reason why I'm even telling you this long personal story, because you have to, when you're a small business owner, you have to cut, you have to cut the things out of your life that are not benefiting you. And yes. when, when you lose your job, when you lose your car, you have to think quickly. For you sure. just do. For sure. So and, that's and why you, we're having you, this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> you will, and you will come up with ideas. Like, yeah. they, like I, me and Alex had a game plan. We're like, so if we do this, how far does that get us? So that mm-hmm. was just on that um, initial house money that we had. How far does that get us? Oh, so if they give us unemployment, and plus the amount that they gave, like how far, like you literally have yeah. to sit down and game plan, but yeah. it's so worth it. Like, and you figure out, you'll figure you figure it out. Every time you'll figure, figure it out, out. You, you figure, figure it out. out. And then there's <laughs> my last one is when you go full time, you have to raise your prices. Oh Most people God. are doing their situation, Preach. doing their <laughs> business at a price when they have a job that is safe and secure and mm-hmm. oh, I'm just doing you a favor type of situation. But when you go into business for yourself and your family, those numbers look way different. So now you're charging instead of the hundred dollars a logo, you're charging mm-hmm. five, six hundred dollars a logo. Why? Because my kid has to eat and that's yeah. what it costs to work with me. And that that logo is a 40 hour work week. And, exactly. and that's people, people don't, that's, that's the other thing. Pay attention to what you guys are, are doing. Pay attention to your projects. Just like last episode, Cam had yes. a timer. Kitchen you do timer. have to pay a kitchen timer. You yep. do have to pay attention to those things because as business owners, we get so caught up in the, the different processes and the different things the the big, huge to-do list mm-hmm. that we get completely away from that. Like yes. <laughs> the value, <laughs> what value, the value. Are, what, what is the value cost is actually costing you? So yes, that's, yes. that's and, usually and you time. Will spend, like, you will spend hours and hours and hours and you deserve to be paid for your time. And yes. I, if they say that if, okay, we, there was one, there was one uh, podcast I was listening to or an episode I was watching. I can't remember I, all this knowledge. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. But yeah. they were talking about how there was a client that had 90, 90, nine, zero clients in a week. And the person, the coach looked at her and said, you need to raise your prices. Yes. Like if you are, if you are able to shoot 90 people in a week, you are not charging enough. Like there is no way in hell. Like now when I look at it, I take maybe one or two projects a week. But I remember being the photographer that was shooting four five, six different families during a weekend or during a, during a week span and then I would go back the next week and and do six more and go back you're the next week out. and do and you're completely just trashed. Like my my to do list was piling up, my bills weren't getting paid. Like I was frustrated, I was burnt out, and I didn't understand it. And it was because I was a full time business owner, not charging full time prices. Yes, it's like a restaurant that doesn't charge enough for their food. It's the same yeah. thing. Because yeah. you're going to keep the doors open. Exactly. You'll eventually end up upside down because you're not mm-hmm. doing what you need to do. And I that know happens. raising your prices, and I'm a testament, raising your prices is hard. I didn't oh want to gosh. do it because I thought the clients that I was working with would be like, well, 
I'll go find someone else to do. Mm -hmm. But I think that's an imposter syndrome type of thing. Um, it's, yeah. it's not real. They're going to work with you. Uh, if you, they'll probably even work with you more if you raise your prices because now yes. you're being serious. So now you the have the right to clients. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's one of those things where I rose, I raised my prices from what they were to what they are now. And yeah. I spent maybe I think a month, month and a half with no clients. No one yeah. showed up to my door. And that's where it was time to reevaluate everything else. So now I raise my prices. What does uh, an experience at that price point look like? Mm -hmm. So I had to raise my quality of everything else. So that's where I'm at with like week to week. I'm, I'm now addressing other parts of the business to, to look and, and be a business that costs what I charge. So yes. it is another, a whole nother, the leap looks different when it comes to every person but every person is going to have to address these problems, especially living in America. These are all the, yeah. the tough spots when you, you go ahead and take the leap. Absolutely. Yeah. These so. are, these are real and serious things that you're going to come up um, when, when taking that leap for your business. Um, yeah. It's, it literally is life changing and yeah, it's scary, but as long as you're taking the time to sit down and look at all the different things that we just, even the things that we just discussed, just have a game plan, just have an idea. Um, and, and that'll help you move forward. And sometimes you're just going to have to pull stuff out of your butt. That's 100%. what we did. That's 100%. Sometimes you're, you will have to drive Uber. I was ready to drive Uber. If I had mm -hmm. to, I was ready to do it. Oh yeah. Because Dude, I was working at Panda Express. Yes. <laughs> I was, I was giving people some fried yes. rice. Like, uh, listen, you, you will do what you need to do to make it work. And there's 100%. no shame in that. Like, but you know, you, there is going to be a point where you get to your full-time small, your, your small business, and you're going to have to make those choices and those sacrifices and figure out what's more important to you. Yep. And that's why we're even talking about any of this stuff today because it's real and True. it can be scary, yeah. but it doesn't have to be. And I 100% agree with you. Uh, the way I always say it is you should always, even in just living, you should always be checking the systems you live in. So mm -hmm. if that's healthcare, if that's your job, if that's always check, are you benefiting from those systems? Yes. If you aren't, you should probably opt out and find a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's on it. Even in your business, this is, is, is what you are dealing in serving you. And if, if it's not be done with it, it's, yeah. it's fine. Find, find somebody else to do it, get rid yeah. of it. What, whatever find, find you want to do, find another way to do it. it. The the fact is the choice is yours. You have choice. the ability to we do all, all the choices. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're just afraid of having those choices and not trusting ourselves to getting to those, yep. those different avenues. You'll find, and I think Tim Ferriss, there's another part in that, that um, four hour work week where he talks about, we always think about our worst case. So mm -hmm. our worst case, we always rank at a one to 10. We always rank it at a 10, but he says our worst case is usually a three and our best case is usually a 10. Mm -hmm. Always. He said they always, the risk is always worth the reward. And that's what yeah. I just want people to know. Like, <laughs> cause if your passion's there, it'll, more likely, more than likely go in that direction because you, you care about it. Right, right. But you have to be intentional about that too. Like, yeah, your sure. passion is definitely going to lead you to that. Um, your why is going to keep you in the game. Yep. Um, but it's, you, you have to realize that you have the control here, guys. You have the control. Like, <laughs> if there's you're, anything you're the that driver. you take from this, you are the driver. Like, you yep. can do this. We did it. We're doing it. It's going to continue doing it. It's it's going to continue and it can be silly and scary and exciting all in one time. Yep. Just like talking with my hands, jazz hands. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> I'm just like, <sighs> watch our YouTube video. You'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm, that's all I had for that. Yeah, that was that was good. That was some some real good content. Um, yeah, I don't think I a hope lot the fire alarms like added the there's a level of um, like uneasiness. They were afraid for me. Like my life was in danger. So <laughs> like <laughs> nope, made just, it. Just we're the on wife the other cooking. Side. Yeah, <laughs> just the wife cooking. Just 
<laughs> Gotta love an apartment. She's not yeah. a bad cook. It's just about a bad, just a, a, a bad oven and a bad, a bad oven. oven. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode. Episode six. Episode six. Yeah. Now Justin's going to go take a nap. You're boring me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go take a nap. No, I need to eat. I'm so hungry. If you guys yeah, heard my stomach growling, time. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm ready for lunch. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, this was episode six. If you want to talk to us, tell us about that leap that you've leap. been thinking about. What's holding you, you back? Done. Yeah. What is there anything standing in the way? If it is, tell us. If there isn't and you did it, awesome. Let us congratulate you. We want to hear yeah. from you. So head on over to Instagram. We're Wisdom by Design Podcast on Instagram, spelled exactly as it sounds. Um, and we also have a YouTube channel. So if you would like to see all of my very fun hand gestures, <laughs> you can find us at YouTube. The link is in the bio. Um, I'm Jessa. And I'm Cameron. And this is uh, Wisdom by Design. Wisdom by Design. Figure that out. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for tuning in, guys. I promise Uh, we'll get better at this closing thing. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week. Wisdom by Design. Wisdom by Design.